Okay. Good evening. Good evening and welcome to the photojournalism night. And we will uh, get underway after just a few announcements. First, our upcoming meetings, August 19th, uh, Zoom presentation. It'll be an interesting talk. This is going to be uh, John Martin talking on a case for black and white photography and travel photography. Um, he has a number of examples where pictures that really are iconic pictures or pictures we thought looked good um, that we don't tend to think of travel photography in black and white, and he'll show us which ones really look best that way. And I looked at his website, and it's actually quite interesting. So that's, that's next week, uh, Zoom presentation. August 26th. Not next week. Next week is the competition. Two weeks. August 12th. That's right. We started on slide number two. August 12th, next week, is our creative competition. Thanks, Mike. That's why we have a past president. Uh, August 12th, creative competition, projection. That'll be next week. And then, if you could wait, the week after will be John Martin talking on a case mm -hmm. for black and white mm -hmm. photography. And then, the week after that, and this is all on the calendar, will be a Zoom presentation from Lori Friedman, uh, all on Burning Man. And I went to her website and looked at that, and that's actually quite interesting because she'll tell us the whole story of Burning Man, and she's made several trips uh, to there. And then on September 2nd, it's a black and white competition, which will be a print competition. Upcoming field trips, August 7th, coming up. Uh, Landerman's Mill and Fellows Garden field trip out in the Youngstown area. Uh, Fellows Garden is a beautiful botanical garden. August 8th, unfortunately, is the Goodyear Wigfoot Lake Base. It's one of those they gave us a limitation on amount of people, and that was sold out. We are looking for another date uh, for that. When some of these field trips are sold out, it's usually because of a size limitation put upon by the... Um, by the people that we're going to see. And what we are encouraging as we go to some of these, like Back to the Wild the second time, we are encouraging members and asking members who've been there the first time to please don't sign up for the second time and let people who haven't gone uh, get a chance. But then, the, the cream of the crop, August 14th, Whispering Acres Animal Farm Sanctuary in Medina which is just for an animal farm rescue. It is a fairly big one. And they have there Kevin the pig, Stanley and Walter, the turkey boys uh, there as well. I, you can't make this stuff up. This is on their website uh, as well. So it's actually quite interesting. You can sign up for, uh, for that. We have our first exhibit coming out. Now, we haven't done exhibits for now two years because of COVID, and that was very popular. And so we have an exhibit committee now that's put a lot of work into this. Uh, we have our first exhibit coming up, the Coffee House at University Circle, and the title is a little bit misleading. It's Fall for the Circle, which people think are fall pictures, and it's summertime, but it's kind of like falling in love, fall for the circle. Kind of thing. So it's, it's what makes you love the University Circle area. So if any pictures, pictures of the University Circle area or Squire Valley Farm down to mid-downtown, it's kind of like that. The exhibit runs November 6th to December 9th. Uh, there are going to be 25 to 30 images uh, chosen to be on display. The entries are open now, so you can enter and you enter on the uh, CPS competitions page there will be an upload link to upload your pictures. Uh, the pictures will be judged and 25 to 30 will be, uh, will be chosen. And we encourage everyone to really get involved in this because, again, this has been very, very popular in the past. Items of interest coming up August 13th and 14th. After two years um, of not having it because of COVID, Hale Farm is bringing back the Civil War reenactment, the largest reenactment of the Civil War in Ohio. 
And August 19th to 20th is the Kanye D-Day reenactment, one of the largest reenactments of the D-Day landing, uh, which they do every year, and it is free and is a phenomenal uh, chance to get a lot of excellent pictures out at Kanye. Pixel Photo Fest is coming up August 13th to 15th. Um, classes, workshops, all kinds of things, and again, a real opportunity for CPS members, since this is usually, it's, the ticket price is $169, there is a $100 discount for CPS members, and you can get that through our, our website, sign up for, uh, for that. Field Trip Photo Gallery is still, the links are open at any time for this or any other field trips, so you could just Put your pictures up there. The fall school enrollment is now underway for fundamentals, intro to Photoshop, photo editing, and Lightroom Classic. And each new student enrolling will be getting a $50 gift certificate uh, from Pixel for photographic equipment. So there's a little incentive if you were thinking of signing up. Uh, the information is all on our website. And the virtual summer session is still going on for fundamentals of good photography. If one wanted to get a get a jump jump on that. And of course, this and all of our meetings are on our YouTube channel, except for the Zoom meetings, which are members only. And we hopefully will have a site on our new website so that you'll be able to watch any of the last two years worth of uh, Zoom talks that we've had, and that'll be for members only. But the general, um, the general Friday night meetings are on the YouTube channel for everyone. So without further ado, then, we'll get underway with our photojournalism. Bill, you have anything to say, or we just get underway? OK, you want to bring up the what we're going to do is we will bring up the images and have the person tell us a little bit about that. Let me just get the lights. Sideways. Oh, sorry. All right, welcome all to for the journals tonight. Um, my first image, anybody that really knows me knows that there are two kinds of music, ACDC and everything else. So when uh, ACDC shows up, the cover band for Rockin' on the River, I'm there. So ACD, Extreme ACDC opened up the uh, Rockin' on the River concert series May 27th in Lorraine. And Freddie DeMarco plays the part of lead guitarist Angus Young during the concert. And that whole concert series of the Rockin' on the River, the first one, this was just one of many that extends through the summer at the outside venue. And I was just reading today, they are going to be doing improvements at that site because it has become so popular for this international festival and everything else. Um, this next image came from the Cleveland Homeless Stand Down, which was held in April for the first time in a couple of years because of COVID. Haircuts are just one of the many services offered at the Cleveland Homeless Stand Down. Thank you. Two years of absence because of COVID, the stand took place April 23rd for the first time at First Energy Stadium. The homeless stand down takes many volunteers to make everything run efficiently, and these two women were handing out clothing, which is one of the big items that takes place there. Shoes and socks are big items, uh, though at the homeless are given any clothing that they might need. There are also medical services from various companies in the Cleveland area. I call this one homeless pain. A man wheelchair bound just grimaces in pain and don't know the reason why. As he makes her way around First Energy Stadium, uh, host of the latest Cleveland stand down. Um, again, it was taking place April 23rd. Normally in a homeless stand down, CPS will set up studio booths and take portraits for people, but it was kind of a short notice and there was uh, some question about the location and the lighting. So we did not do that this year though. We did provide five or six photographers to document the event 
and get photos to them. Um, at the homeless stand down, there are places for people to eat, volunteers giving away food, there are medical services and services for the homeless, or not for the homeless, but for veterans. Hi. Uh, in March, I had the opportunity, March of this year, I had the opportunity to visit and uh, photograph last time. And uh, I was out in a backcountry area, an old coal mining road, uh, coal mining, mining, uh, timber road. And I uh, uh, was gone on this road for about, I don't know, an hour. And on my way back, this gentleman popped up out of nowhere. Uh, I stopped. I had a wonderful conversation with him. His, his name is Mr. Monson. And I uh, uh, chatted for a few minutes. And I asked him where, where, where he was coming from. And he said, this is, this is my home area. There was not a home in sight. And I said, well, how old are you? He paused and, and there was really no, no answer. I said, well, what year were you born? And he said, a long time ago. And, and an interesting man, I said, well, what, what have you done in your life? He says, well, I'm a gold miner. I've been a gold miner all of my life. He said, the equipment that you see around here is my equipment. I also like to fish. And I'm a fishing guy. And I, uh, I enjoyed a conversation for 15 or 20 minutes more. Uh, and, and we measure people in a lot of ways. And I normally don't stop and talk with strangers, but this is a, an occurrence that was sort of like unusual for me. And I, the next photo, if I can, uh, this is his backdrop. This is, this is an array of one area of his uh, equipment yard. Next photo. I mean, there is equipment scattered along uh, a mile-long area. The next photo, please. Just gives you an idea of the history of this gentleman and the use of this equipment. Now, I don't know if he's 75 or 105, but if you look at the next photo, the, the happiest guy in the world, in, in my opinion, if, if I was to pick a person who would be Mr. Alaska, isn't that a person that looks like Mr. Alaska? We shook hands, and I wished him a very, very best, and he, and I, and he said, uh, and I said, please have a great day, and he says, now you have fun in Alaska. Like I have had, like I have had fun in Alaska my entire life. He's a native Alaska. An amazing, amazing moment in my life. Think about him, uh, and that's why I wanted to bring him up in journalism, because I still think about this guy on a very regular basis. Why, Mr. Alaska? Thank you. These pictures are uh, by Bonnie, and um, excuse me if I mess up names here. But the five pictures we were going to go through is a series she took showing people coming out from behind Taqua Minnan Falls in Michigan. She says, since I was on a continuous boat, I was able to show them emerging step by step. I felt lucky because we just happened upon that scene. We saw one person emerge from the falls and waited to see if another would be coming out, and we were rewarded. It was fun seeing the other people watching them as well. So we'll just go through the series very slowly. Next one. And this is the series that she took. Dardanelist photo she titles, Proud to be an American. This airman is seen proudly planting the American flag as he waves to the crowd at the Cleveland Air Show. Proud to be an American. Debbie's first photo she titles, Kids Waving to the Visitors. 
We were driving back in our safari vehicle when we saw these friendly kids that were so excited to see us. COVID had really taken its toll on tourism in the Okavanga Delta area of Botswana. These kids hadn't seen anyone outside their village for almost two years. Titled Walking Home, these kids were walking together on the main road while their parents leisurely strolled behind on their way home. Most families didn't have cars, so this was a normal mode of transportation via one's feet. This is called carrying the load. This young lady was carrying water to her home while her two small boys were running behind, playing around. Daily chores here are clearly much different than what we are used to. Eric's first photo is titled Disney, and it is of the parade of barbershop quartets at Disneyland. Eric calls this, why did the geese cross the road? A gaggle of geese stopped traffic on Route 422 near Solon as they crossed the road. Eric works in Solon. It's probably something he caught going to or from work. This is called the Disney Barbershop Quartet. During the parade of the quartet, they were singing Disney tunes out of the trolley. And Eric's last photo is TSO in concert. And this is a photo of the Trans-Siberian Orchestra during a concert in Cleveland in 2021. Marge's first photo is Kozumel, and again, I'm not sure about the name, Kozumel Municipal Market. Kozumel, Mexico's Municipal Market, or Mercado Municipal, sells everything from fresh fruit to fish to flea market items. The vendors are friendly and accommodating, and one never knows what will be available to buy. Kazumel Street Art is the title of this. Murals can be found painted on the walls around the marketplace. The figure in this painting has the words love, respect, and peace written in English and Spanish. It appears that some additional graffiti has also been added. Marsh titles this the flip-flop wall. If one is in need of flip-flops, this would be the place to shop. This is called Our Lady of Guadalupe. Our Lady of Guadalupe holds a special place in the religious life of Mexico and is one of the most popular religious devotions. Her image has played an important role as a national symbol of Mexico. Therefore, it is not unexpected that a shrine to her would be found in the middle of the marketplace. And her last photo is titled, The End of a Long Day. And here is a market vendor at the end of his long day. Okay, those of you, uh, we were talking before, I don't know, I just got a new camera, mirrorless, and so I was not planning, I was out at a little little event and decided just to grab a few pictures just to see if it worked. Uh, what not to. But it was also a very interesting thing. This was a, have any of you have ever been to the Hooli House um, in uh, Cleveland's chain of uh, Irish restaurants, uh, this is the um, owner's um, father who is, uh, used to be a singer in a band, and he's turning 90, and he's a fixture. So they threw him a party, but not just any party. This was last week, this was out at uh, one of the kids' farms uh, outside of Medina, and hundreds of people there, and the guest of honor made an entrance with a horse-drawn carriage and bagpipes, and kids, and it, just, it was the biggest spectacle too. But what amazed me most, this guy was 90, and he put me to shame. So there he is there, too. This is the horse-drawn carriage. The cars were all stopped and whatnot uh, as they came in. Here he is. 
90. His wife was 85 previous week, and they took their vows again there, too. Uh, their son, who was uh, not a priest, but uh, he had the script, uh, too. So they did that, and amazingly enough, as well, and here, by the way, I went specifically to try out my eye detection, and the sun was bright, Everyone was wearing sunglasses. <laughs> Just did not get a single eye all afternoon, so forget that. But she again uh, was very happy to have a second chance, and when they asked her if you know, you say I do, she wanted a pick to think about it. <laughs> and my final shot is it, what amazed me most is at 90 years old, he spent half the night dancing. Well, I wouldn't even get off the chair. And singing. He used to sing in the band, and he belted out the old Irish songs to the band, and that's just what he spent most of the night doing. So, you know, just, you know, an amazing, uh, amazing man uh, as well. So, those are my, my images. Yes, we were a guest. Ron's first image is titled Family Selfie. And Ron says, I usually don't take a photo of someone else's selfie. This is my daughter taking a selfie in the family, and I really got a kick out of watching this. This image is titled Man at Work, a young attendee at a Bible school, craft time, Painting a birdhouse. This is serious work. Hi, everyone. I'm one of the summer students um, in the club. I'm new. I'm really enjoying it. Thanks to everyone for your support. And Richard kind of encouraged me to put some pictures in tonight, so that's what I did. Uh, a couple, well, a month or two ago, I attended the March for Our Lives Cleveland. It was on June 11th. Um, there were many cities across the nation that hosted a rally to bring awareness to gun control after the Uvalde and Buffalo mass shootings. And they also were um, talking about the Supreme Court's potential overrule, overruling of Roe v. Wade. So this woman was a vocal participant who happened to be standing next to me, and I, I just was captivated by her actions and how she behaved at the at the rally, so I took her photograph. Uh, I went to the Ohio State Fair last weekend and I ran across a boxing match in one of the buildings. And this young man had a gamut of emotions and he was very expressive. He had a very tough fight. He got beaten very badly, actually. And this was the moment he was waiting for the results of the fight and this was the male figure at his side. They did announce the winner shortly thereafter, and the winner is, is the title of this photo, and you can see he has some major disappointment. Uh, the gentleman in blue there was the winner, looking victorious in his facial expression. Also at the fair, they had the All Ohio State Fair Youth Choir on parade. Um, I was a singer at one point in my uh, career as well, and I, I enjoy singers, and I just loved how happy these people looked and all the color, and um, I just found it to be a very happy photo. They were walking down the midway to thousands of spectators at the fair. Um, the last one is again at the protest um, on June 11th, um, and I was walking down the street and just saw this reflection of the protesters in this large structure, mirrored structure. I don't even know what the structure was. It was just this large mirror on the side of the road. And to me, it was kind of like a political statement. The more I looked at it, the, the protesters are so tiny compared to that big building. And, and while their, their intentions are good and they're, you know, they're trying to stop the violence and they're trying to stand up for women's rights, I couldn't help but thinking the whole time I was in that, in that march that they actually, I just felt they had so little power, actually. What they were doing was well-intentioned, but the result of that rally, I didn't feel was going to be very much change. Um, and so I just found these tiny little protesters against that backdrop to be political in my mind. 
So those are my photos. Thank you, Richard, for encouraging me. I was a photo, or I was a journalism major my first three years of college, not photo. I was, I was actually a writer, and I gave that up, and I, I really, I regret that very much. So I, I really enjoy the fact that I can do this and express myself in this way and still hold on to some of that. That, that I had a long time ago. Well, I am, I am glad you entered, and it, you can tell you've been a journalist. This last picture is really phenomenal. Um, you're right, it, it's just the way you, you captured that. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you entered. Okay, and that's, uh, let me get the lights. <laughs> That concludes our, our photojournalism for the uh, for the evening. Um, as we, you know, we encourage everyone with these. It's easy to upload pictures digitally on Shutterscore, um, and we encourage you just to participate in the competitions. They are a lot of fun, especially photojournalism. So, thank you all for coming. We'll see you next week.